What a wonderful privilege it is to be with you uh, this evening uh, for the uh, Wednesday even uh, Bible study here at Aspen Wall Church where the Bishop John Walden is the pastor. We're having a wonderful time uh, trusting the Lord and walking in the ways of the Lord. So I want to welcome you to uh, our uh, program this evening on uh, this, uh, this Wednesday night. Our uh, Wednesday night Bible study is uh, through uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube, YouTube live stream. And uh, please uh, hit your share button and uh, help us promote the service tonight uh, to tune in all of your uh, friends, acquaintances, and uh, friends uh, on the uh, social services. Let's do that. And uh, I'd like to invite you to please join us this coming Sunday uh, for church service. The service is going to uh, begin at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning, and uh, then we also will be conducting service on Sunday night at 5 o'clock. We are taking the proper precautions necessary to do the social distancing, and we're asking at this time that uh, in the church, so forth, there be no physical contact, no handshake, no huggings, no fist bumps, uh, no contact. Uh, period. So uh, please, uh, we want you to observe all of that. But in the uh, starting back uh, after the 1st of June, um, but until then, but in uh, the 1st of June, uh, we will be having uh, the uh, Sunday worship service in person, Wednesday night, Bible study, Sunday school, everything back to our regular schedule. I would like to invite you to help us with our fundraisers. The work that we do for the Lord here, both here and around the world. Uh, the, one of the buildings that we have here that we're working to uh, finish paying for, and uh, we're chipping away at that uh, quickly, and uh, we, need, uh, we need your help. And uh, we need your help with a couple of our fundraisers. Uh, we have custom aprons that, uh, that are made and that are gorgeous. They're really beautiful. Uh, for children, they're $10.00. For adults, $20, and we have some licensed material apron uh, for the Cavaliers, the Indians, and the Browns that are $30, and these aprons are uh, uh, beautiful, but they're also reversible. You can use them, and uh, you can use them not only for cooking, but uh, you can use them for painting or whatever uh, that you're doing uh, in the house and around the yard, and as well, we have the custom face mask for five dollars. If you would like one, uh, please just send us a comment and we'll message you uh, with more of the details. We also have t-shirts available. They're ten dollars a piece and um, they read on the t-shirts, Racism is a Sin and I Am Revival. And we have uh, sizes available from small through three and even four X and all of them are $10 each. And so if you would like to have one, if you just comment which one you would like, your size, we'll get back in touch with you. Again, I want to say thank you to everybody that has remained it faithful to their uh, giving and support uh, during this time of the uh, 
coronavirus that's uh, shut our country down. You've been so faithful and we're so grateful uh, for what you have done. So I want to invite you to please continue uh, to do that. And uh, you may not be uh, a member of Aspen Wall Church, but you like what we do. You like the ministry. You like the outreach that we do through our bus ministry, Sunday school, all of the other things that we do, food pantry. And you'd like to help if you would. There are four ways that you can give. You can give online if you just go to aspenwallchurch.com and uh, follow the prompts on there. You'll be able to uh, support uh, the work of the Lord. You can mail your gifts to the Aspenwall Church, Post Office Box 10026, Cleveland, Ohio, 44110. You may drop it off at the church Monday to Friday from 9 to 5. And then if you're signed up on the text to give, that number is 216-925-4483. That's 925-G-I-V-E to give. So if you need to contact the church for any reason, our uh, uh, phone number is 216-268-0879. The office hours are from 9 until 5. I want to get into the study of uh, the Word tonight, and we want to talk about, uh, for these uh, next couple of times we're going to meet together, about the degrees of faith. And uh, uh, the word uh, faith, we have to understand, is a kind of a generic uh, word. We're going to talk more about it as we go along. The first mention of the word faith in the Word of God is in Deuteronomy 34.20. Here's what it says. And he said, the Lord, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very forward generation, children in whom there is no faith. The last mention of the word faith is in the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Now, um, we don't use that word froward generation much anymore, but uh, what, it, what, it, what it means, of course, is that, it's, uh, uh, that when, when a person is uh, froward, uh, it means they're kind of hard-headed and they don't listen. So uh, God is saying that Israel at that time, they were being hard-headed and stiff-necked and, uh, and would not listen. The word faith occurs in the scripture at least 231 times and uh, that the word faith appears in the scripture. So I want to discuss with you tonight some of the degrees, the facets, the aspect, the uh, aspects of faith, and um, we want to we want to give you a kind of a, um, a definition of faith and what it is. It's uh, something that is strong or an unshakable belief in something, not necessarily that there is something that you can see. To believe in, not talking about a leap in the dark. That's not what we're talking about. But putting our faith, not specifically in something, although that's possible as well, but someone. It is a specific system of religious beliefs. For instance, the Jewish faith, the Muslim faith, and uh, and so forth. Uh, the theology of it, the Christianity, our trust is in the Almighty God, the Yahweh of the Bible, and in his actions and promises. Theology, a conviction of the truth of certain doctrines of religion, especially may not be particularly based on some reason, and then reason of the mind. And uh, so it is complete confidence or trust in a person, a remedy, etc., and any set of firmly held principles or beliefs, the word faith. It is the allegiance or loyalty as to a person or cause in the phrases, for instance, like keep the faith or break faith. And there's another one about bad faith. 
that has to do with insincerity and dishonesty. Good faith, honesty, or sincerity as of intention in business in the phrase good faith. I want to talk to you first in this particular degree of faith about no faith. The verse that I read you from uh, the book of Deuteronomy, it said this generation is a very froward, F-R-O-W-A-R-D, which, like I said, it has to do with contrary, bad condition, and uh, this generation, and that has no stability. And uh, the, the Lord was saying about that generation that they were fickle, uh, we know we've met fickle people. It's like people that watch the baseball game. And uh, the uh, the umpire, he makes a few good calls uh, for the home team. And they're saying, rah, rah, rah. We love, the, we love the umpire. But all of a sudden, he calls an out that we don't agree with. He calls a ball that we don't agree with. And all of a sudden, you hear the call from the bleachers, kill the umpire. And that's what we know of as fickle people. And when people are fickle, and because they are, they are faithless, and you can't depend on them. That's the difference there. So the, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 6, it says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. And the him is God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So what we're saying tonight, that it is impossible to be pleasing to God without faith, the God kind of faith. That, of course, means that the lack of faith is displeasing to God. And it's really the absence of faith, or is it a spiritual condition of the person that makes it impossible for them to exhibit faith. People who have no faith are called forward. And in that, they're selfish, headstrong, people who go their own way without any real consideration for God or for his holy word. Their thoughts and actions are motivated by the spiritual emptiness of their own hearts. With their darkened minds, they stubbornly ignore the declarations of God. This is the Old Testament description of people who refuse to have God in their lives. Paul describes some people of his day that were being absurd and wicked. It was not the absence of faith that made them that way, though. Their attitude and actions made it impossible for them to have faith. There was no place for God or his word in their lives. And that when lives are self-directed and they refuse to give God any direction. So that's why an evil heart of unbelief keeps a person separated from God. If the heart is full of only the issues of life, there can be no real place for God in it. Most of us have met people who on the outside where people can observe and look and see that they seem to be spiritual. They seem to be on the up and up. Sometimes they even try to uh, begin and start ministries to help others. But they have lived their lives in such a manner of selfishness and evil intent that it never works. People are able to see right through a life in which there is no faith. You see, no faith is the result of the character of a person. We need to understand something. In, in, second, um, in second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 16, uh, it says, But though the outward man is perishing every day, yet the inward man is being renewed. What we must understand is that we know this naturally. 
uh, that all you've got to do is take a picture the, that was taken of you 20 years ago and go stand in front of the mirror and hold that, uh, that picture up and look in the mirror and you can understand this outward person is perishing day after day after day. But to those who are in Christ, What's happening is the inside is being renewed and built up every day. What we need to understand is that dead things, and if you do not have Christ and faith in your life, the Bible says you're dead. We're dead. And that, that's why he said we must be raised from the dead by being born again. So what we have to understand is that dead things are changed from the outside. You've seen animals that are run over on the road or in the street, and the first thing that begins to happen is the outside begins to, begins to rot. They begin to stink. Flies. And that's the way it is in our life without God. Our lives, they just stink. They just don't work like you're supposed to. But you see, living things are changed from within. This body that you and I have is not going to live forever. It's going to be done because it is now perishing day by day. But if you know Christ and he's living on the inside, the inward man, see, as I said, dead things are changed from the outside. But living things are changed from the inside. No matter what you feed something that's dead, it doesn't matter. They're going to stink worse. They're going, to be, they're going to be in the worst shape all the time. But you see, living things, we have to feed ourselves. And as we feed ourselves, then that food loses its identity. It becomes us. And that's the same way with the, spirit, with the spiritual. We feed ourselves on the Word of God. And it goes down deep in within us, finds a lodging place, and begins to change us from joy to joy. You see, what it is, it's like rain. One thing that rain does, rain makes a living tree grow. But the same rain that makes a living tree grow will cause a dead tree to rot. The same water, the same rain that makes that tree in your yard grow and flower will do the same thing with that tree in the back of your lot that's dead. It'll rot it. You see, when you have no faith, it's the result of the character of a person. And then there's not only the person of no faith. We have some that have little faith, little faith. Listen to Matthew 6 and 30. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Listen to this one, Matthew 14 and 31. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Now, in Matthew 6, Jesus is talking to a group of people that are worried about what we're going to eat what we're going to wear, where we're going to live. And Jesus is saying to them, what you don't understand is that the uh, lilies of the field, they don't worry. The birds of the air, they don't worry. Your heavenly Father feeds them. He provides all of the things that they need. So he said, they don't worry about that. You've never seen a robin sit on your porch looking like they're worried about where their next meal is coming from. They know where they are. They go right where they go right where they are. And so he's talking to them. And here in, Mar in uh, Matthew 14 and 31, Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. Who's he talking about? St. Peter, who is, had stepped out of the boat. And, uh, and as he stepped out of the boat, took his eyes off of the Lord. And as he did that, he began to sink. And then the Lord asked him, he said, O thou of little faith. He's saying that to St. Peter. Wherefore didst thou doubt? Why did you doubt? In Matthew 16 and 8, he said, which when Jesus perceived, 
he said unto them. Now, this is a group of men that he was talking to that he had talked to, had talked to them about uh, getting a coat and buying bread. And they said, oh, he's talking about because we didn't bring any bread. No, what he said, he said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Beware of the teaching of the cults. Beware of the teaching of, of religious people that do not have relationship with God as they should. And so they thought Jesus was talking about bread that they didn't bring. And all of the time, he takes the time and explain to them. And then they say, oh, yeah, he was talking about the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So little faith is taken up with circumstances. That's the, see, that's the problem that people that have little faith. Circumstances rule their life. And not only that, but the concerns of life, they loom so large in the horizon of a person's mind that it obscures God and his promises. Now, it's also not true, like there's some uh, religious uh, folks that say, if you have, uh, if you have cancer, you don't, you don't never acknowledge it. You don't never say, I have cancer. If you have a bad cold, you don't never acknowledge that you have a bad cold. You see, that's not faith. That's not the way faith works. What it is, faith never says that big, that big stone that rolled off of the mountain into the road. The faith doesn't say there's no rock in the road. That, that uh, Genuine faith never says that. Genuine faith says, my God is bigger than that rock that is in the road. My God is bigger than that cancer. My God is bigger than all of the things that are happening in my life. True faith does not ignore and, uh, and act like it's not going on. It meets it head on and says our God is greater. So the evidence of God's concern about nature, he's obvious about it. It was used by Jesus in his teaching on regard to mankind. If God can take care of the birds in the air, if God takes care of the lilies of the field, why can't he take care of man? Why would he have any trouble taking care of those 12 apostles? See, we're serving a God that brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, two to three millions of people, for 40 years and fed them every day and took, uh, took such great care of them. Their shoes didn't wear out. Think about it, all of that. And if he could do that, could you imagine that? And not only that, but he's talking to them about other things. So the disciples are so much more concerned about the things of this life and natural than the spiritual. And in so doing, they, 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 bring to, they bring to fruition the smallness of their faith. Jesus analyzed the situation correctly and then pointed out that if he could be trusted once, he can be trusted again. Listen to me. If the needs of 5,000 people can be met with five loaves and a few fish, and 4,000 can be fed and ministered to, how easy is it going to be to meet the handful, the needs of a handful of the disciples? You see, when you let this small faith get into your life, it takes advantage of you. Little faith is generally impulsive. Not only that, but its activities are challenged by doubt when circumstances become greater than my faith. If Peter's example, the waves of Galilee, come in here close, listen to the word of God. The waves of Galilee proved to be more and greater in the mind of Peter at that moment than the words of Jesus. And he began to sink. Many times when you deal with people, circumstances have greater influence. And the degree of the dreadful conditions, the length of an illness, the grip of a habit, the hopelessness of a situation so fills the part in the mind that there's little room for God. So in matters such as this, the greatness of God's power got to be shared at, and it's got to be shared for, as we do this until God becomes bigger than our problem. Our God is bigger than any problem that I have. That's why you need to be in church. That's why you need to be worshiping God 
Not just when you come to church, but in your house. I got up this morning, raised both hands to the Lord. I said, God, you're greater than anything that's going to happen to me this whole day. Yes, God's greater than the coronavirus. God is greater than cancer. God is greater than any disease, any, any diabetes, anything in this world. But you see, and when he starts becoming larger than all of this, then we begin to do what? As, as, the, as the pastor begins to preach and declare the word of God, all of a sudden the process begins to take place. The focus on our heart begins to change, not only begin to change, and our heart begins to go towards God. And we take the time and minister, and we begin to do that. But you have to focus you have to focus. You know, you know what focusing is. When you want to take a picture of your family and you've got the camera and if you've got one of those that you need to focus, what you want to do, you want to get your family sharp. And in order to do that, you have to get the, the, the scene behind them. You have to get it out of the viewfinder. You've got to get it down to where that you focus on your subject. And when you and I begin to focus on God, focus like a laser, on God, all of a sudden, faith begins to ignite. But the person with little faith, they begin to look at the waves. They begin to look at the wind. And so imagine talking to someone that's totally surrounded by overwhelming circumstances and, and people that, that, that are kind of wishing, why don't you just die? Patience maybe is going to have to be practiced. You see, the truth of the matter is, he said, even if our mother and our father forsake us, God will take us up. You're not going through anything that others have not gone through before. So we've got to change that little faith and get big faith going. So the man at the pool of Bethesda, 38 years. How can this world, could you ever imagine that? That you would go back to that place 38 years. Not only that, he's surrounded by people that perhaps is not even interested in him. And, and remember, he said, every time I get ready and go down myself and step in, somebody always steps in ahead of me. But Jesus, he said to him that day, do you want to be made whole? And I'll tell you, that man went home that day and he went home by the power of God. You see, we've got to know that God cares. Keep pressing until that person comes to the place that they know it's going to be different because of their faith. God continues to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. Little faith is always concerned with circumstances in the natural realm. I want you to join me in prayer. You may be going through difficult times. You may, have, you may have tried going to church. You may have tried praying. You may have tried, but you've given up because nothing, nothing has happened. You need to turn your life over to God. Would you join me in prayer just for a moment? Eternal God, my heavenly Father, I know, would you pray this prayer right with me? I know that I'm a sinner. I know I've sinned against you many times. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me, God, I pray. I, I join your family. Take me in your family. I give you my life. I receive your life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, comment. Let us know you did. Let us know that you prayed and you sought the Lord. Not only that, but we want you to come and join together with us in prayer. Pastor John would be glad to welcome you, uh, he and Sister Angie and the family, uh, to Aspenwall Church Sunday morning, and uh, that you could uh, do this. Uh, we're going to be here at 11 o'clock Sunday morning, and also at 5 o'clock Sunday night. So come, and we're going to be asking you to observe the physical uh, distances and so forth, and uh, we're going to be back in the, after the 1st of June. We'll be in back to our regular uh, service schedule, Sunday school, youth meetings, and all of that. But would you please help us with our fundraisers? We have uh, these fundraisers, these custom aprons for sale, children are $10, adults are $20. We have licensed material for the calves, Indians, and Brown, and they're $30, as well as the custom face mask for $5. If you'd like to have one, please just go ahead and comment. 
and we'll message you all of the details. We also have got t-shirts available for $10 a piece. Racism is a sin, one of them says. The other one, I am revival. And if you would like one, please comment which one you'd like and, and, and your size, and we'll, we'll get back to you. We want to say thank you to those who have helped us and those of our church that you continue to do the work of the Lord. There are four ways you can help us here at the church. You can give online, aspenwallchurch.com. You can mail your offering to Post Office Box 10026, Cleveland, Ohio, 44110. You can drop your offering off at the church between 9 and 5. You can text to give if you signed up, 216-925-GIVE, G-I-V-E, or 925-4483. If you'd like to contact the church for any reason, our phone number, it's manned all of the time, is 216-268-0879. And our office hours are from 9 to 5, Monday to Friday. Until we meet again, God bless you is my prayer.